again, if, if I had, you know, forward thinking, I probably would have done things differently, but we needed to get something moving so that as I was talking to board members, as I was talking to potential donors, I had something to kind of tell our story. I love the piece. I probably would just have changed some of the content now that we have stronger stories to tell. Um, so that then leads to the Legacy Society, so our Plan Giving Society. And again, this was something that typically nonprofit organizations, plan giving is kind of that final um, step of moving a donor along the path of giving. But because we had that history, we thought it was important that we, we start off with an organization that recognizes people um, who make that decision to give within their will or trust right away. So that was that. So, so these were our first couple of pieces. And early on, we, we stuck with the four words um, that are in the first piece. And, and <coughs> the branding become, kind of spawned out of this piece with the inspire, grow, learn, give. And I wish I could you know, take credit for saying, yeah, and this was the plan all along, and we evolved. <coughs> well, it, it very much, we fell into it, and we, and we kind of evolved as it was necessary. So inspire, grow, learn, give. So now I need to develop a donor base. I need to get some annual gifts. So we created our first annual campaign called the Imagine Campaign, sticking within the one word um, theme, but also making sure that <coughs> the colors tied in, the look felt like it was consistent with the other pieces, and that the flow happened with, with the one word images on what it can do. Um, and so that, that was our first journey into really evolving the brand into something further. At the same time, and I wish I could show you our old website just to give you an idea of the transformation, but I'll give you a, just a quick visual. Open a blank screen and put four giant, or no, six giant green buttons. Like, it looks like computer keys, but even bigger than a computer key, and have one that says, Foundation meetings, one <laughs> that says minutes. I think one was like bylaws. Literally, that was our website. It was a blank screen with six giant green buttons that each had one thing that would click to another. I don't even know if it was another page or if it just scrolled down. It was horrible. Like I couldn't. When I asked where the website was, <laughs> well, this is it. I'm like, no. Well, where's like the info? Like, what do we do? Where's the information? Well, this is it. Great. <laughs> and I had a, a, future, a current board member actually called me and he said, I was trying to figure out what's on your website. This was the old website. And I was reading through the minutes because that's what I could find. And it looks like you've been constantly talking about adding new board members. And literally, if you went through the minutes every time there was a conversation, yeah, we should probably look at adding more board members. He's like, and I'd be interested. Thinking, oh my gosh, this website actually brought in a board <laughs> of what a real website will do if that could happen. Um, so, so we evolved into creating a website um, that that continued with the branding, with the inspire, learn, grow, give the colors. Kind of that color bar is something that we we use to tie a lot of it together, um, and it's again. As you all will understand, websites are constantly a work in progress. You think that it's good, and then you realize we got to update this, and we got to keep it up, and you got to make it interesting. Um, so this is continually going to be a work in progress. So the two people that helped me with this, they really were just friends of mine that then eventually formed a company. So I just keep calling them and saying, "Okay, well, I need, I need something to do this, or I need something to do that." And so we took from these storybooks. What I found, too, is within our library walls, there was nothing about the Library Foundation. You could go in, of all places, the library, and find nothing about your Library Foundation. The place for resources and information had nothing about us except for that painful little website that if they clicked to, got six green buttons. And so we took this picture, and I said, I need to have a presence in the buildings that people are utilizing so that they can begin to understand how they can support something that they love. If they love the library and they want to support it in ways that they typically can't, the Library Foundation needs to be accessible. So we took these, these stories 
and each of the branches got just a simple little, and this little literally did not cost very much at all. If we laminated these pictures and put them in, I think, $2 frames that were on sale um, <laughs> at Michael's, because they always have frame sales, gotcha. and they usually have coupons online too. Um, so we just got these images so that we could print them out and frame them and have them in the, the library so that there was a presence. We also created a poster about this size that just had some simple simple images that you see in here and then um, a brief description of the library foundation. So the first thing that I, that I did was just try to establish a presence with a consistent look and a consistent message within it evolving into the website and some other things as well. Um, within that I started to then identify what are the avenues and this I'm kind of talking to the nonprofit world right now, but what are the avenues that we're touching people at a different level than just your average user coming in to check out a book and, and leave again? We have four, we have four special collections within our district. Nonprofit, business services, local history and genealogy, and consumer health. And when people come in and take advantage of those services, they're getting kind of above and beyond help. They're getting not just here's a list of books that you want to read, but they're getting statistical information printed out. They're getting business data provided to them. They're getting the, the first steps of creating your own um, health workbook and things like that. They're getting time spent by librarian and library staff to help them on whatever journey they're on. And a lot of times those librarians that are responsible for those areas are being told how can I thank you? Can I give you a gift certificate? Can I, can I pay you? Can I tip your staff? How can I do it? Well, I wanted to answer that question for them. <laughs> and I said, you can do that by making a gift to the foundation. So how do we get that into the hand? So we created a piece that not only helped them in their process of telling their story, um, and this, th there's a card on each of our services in here, but then there's also a little survey that says, what did you like? How could we make your experience better? And then if you would like to make a gift, here's who you send it to and how you can say thank you. Um, so that we can help give those staff who probably will never feel comfortable in saying, if you'd like to make a gift to the Library <laughs> Foundation, here's how you do it. But they can easily say, if you like these services, here are other special collections with business cards of each of the people that oversee them, and then there's information about our library foundation that is a way um, for people to say thank you. So they don't have to ask. They don't. I don't have to put people in uncomfortable positions for doing something that they won't want to do, but I can give them an easy tool to say, here's some more, more information. We would love your feedback if you have any. And again, tying in the branding within all of that. Um, so we spend a year with the Imagine Campaign. The Imagine Campaign goes to support early literacy kits. So we create kits that contains three books, information about library programs, a library card application, um, and ways that parents who really are their child's first teacher can do what they need to do to prepare their child to enter kindergarten and be prepared to read because we know and statistics are astounding if you start behind it is so hard to catch up and if you don't catch up it's the likelihood of success for that child is very low um, and so we wanted to try and get early literacy kids into the hands of every parent and caregiver of pre-readers in St. Charles County first year we started off with um, distributing 2,000 kits to organizations like Crisis Nursery, Youth in Need, um, United Services, so youth serving organizations that are hitting some of the um, some of the families that need a little extra help. This year we now have it in our partner hospitals, Barnes Jewish St. Peter's and Progress West. Every new mom is going to receive a kit and we're still doing all of the youth serving agency 